the male reproductive system. Now, most people are familiar with the external structures of the male reproductive system, but there's actually a lot of structures inside that people are less familiar with. In this video, we're gonna look at all of those different structures of the male reproductive system, what each of them does, and how they're all connected to each other and to other structures in the urinary system. And then we'll identify all of those structures on the torso model to get a better idea of their three-dimensional orientation inside of the pelvic cavity. So let's jump to the whiteboard and get started. So here we have a sagittal cross-section of the pelvic area. We can see a leg back here, we can see the penis, the scrotum, and we can also see the colon and the anus where the colon connects to the outside of the body. Posterior to the colon, we have vertebrae of the spinal cord. And here on the anterior side, we have the front of the pelvis, or really the cartilage between the two halves of the pelvis, as you can see on Mortimer here. The main reason that I include these structures in the diagram is to give us a better understanding of where the male reproductive structures are in relation to nearby organs. The first structure we'll talk about are the testes. The testes are the primary sex organ in the male reproductive system, and they're the site of spermatogenesis, or the creation of sperm cells. Before they technically become sperm cells, these cells called spermatocytes will undergo meiosis, which is gonna reduce their number of chromosomes from the normal 46 down to 23. Most of the cells in the human body have 46 chromosomes, or 23 pairs of chromosomes. But after undergoing the process of meiosis, that number is reduced down to 23 individual chromosomes. Whenever fertilization of an egg cell occurs, 23 chromosomes will come from the sperm cell and 23 chromosomes from the egg cell, creating a new combination of 46 chromosomes for that new zygote. Inside the testes are these long coiled tubes called the seminiferous tubules. As these spermatocytes travel through the seminiferous tubules, they'll undergo these processes of mitosis and meiosis, and they'll eventually develop into mature sperm cells that have the potential to fertilize an egg. Now, before we move on, let's take a look at the structure of the sperm cell itself. The sperm cell will have a head, which will contain the nucleus, and that's where all the genetic material, those 23 chromosomes, are gonna be located. In the body of the sperm cell, there's gonna be a mitochondria that's shaped in this strange sort of coil pattern. And that's gonna help provide the sperm cell with the energy that it needs. And finally, there's the tail. The tail is in a coil and it's gonna rotate and spin. That coiled rotation of the tail will help that cell travel through the female reproductive tract for fertilization if sexual intercourse has occurred. A couple of fun facts about the sperm cells. They can only make left turns because of the direction that their tail rotates. Another interesting fact is that sperm cells are the smallest human cells in the body and egg cells are actually the largest human cell in the body. And whereas the egg cells have a lot of nutrients already built into the cell itself, the sperm cells have to get all of their energy from sugar that's found in the fluid that surrounds the sperm cells. Now this process of spermatogenesis or the production of sperm cells takes place at a slightly lower temperature than the body's normal internal temperature. And because of that, the testes must hang outside of the body in a sac called the scrotum. The scrotum is essentially a patch of skin that's gonna help regulate the temperature of the testes to maximize sperm cell production. Whenever it's cold, the scrotum will contract and pull those testes up closer to the body to keep them warm. And whenever it's warm, then the scrotum will relax so those testes can keep farther from the warmer temperatures of the internal body. The testes also produce testosterone, the primary male sex hormone. They're not drawn in the diagram, but there's lots of blood cells that go to the testes. And whenever the testes produce testosterone, it's not gonna go through the other tubes that I'm about to talk about. That hormone will travel directly into the bloodstream straight from the testes. The sperm cells, however, follow a different path. They're gonna travel next through a structure called the epididymis. The epididymis starts at the top or superior part of the testes, and then it's gonna travel down and then back up to the vas deferens. The epididymis is basically an extension of the seminiferous tubules where the sperm cells will continue to grow and mature and develop until they're ready for ejaculation. Now during sexual arousal and then ejaculation, the sperm cells will travel up through a tube called the vas deferens. The vas deferens extends from the testes and the epididymis upward anterior to that pelvic bone and then posterior to the back. Connected to the back or the posterior part of the vas deferens are a pair of glands called the seminal vesicles. That word seminal is the same root as semen, and the seminal vesicles are gonna produce some of the fluid that the sperm travel through during ejaculation. And to clarify a couple terms here, sperm refers to the cells produced by the testes that carry genetic information, whereas semen refers to both the fluid and the cells that travel during ejaculation. The semen acts as lubrication for the sperm cells to travel, as well as providing nutrients that supply the sperm with the energy that they need. And just past the seminal vesicle, the two vas deferens will join with the urethra, which is connected to the bladder. 
So here's the bladder, which of course stores urine until it's ready to be expelled during urination. And the bladder is connected to the kidneys by two tubes called ureters, which will bring the fluid from the kidneys down to the bladder to be stored. You can see that here in the diagram as well. This spot where the two vas deferens join together with the urethra is also surrounded by a gland called the prostate gland. The prostate, just like the seminal vesicle, will secrete some of the fluid that makes up the semen that the sperm travel through. Now the prostate gland in the male reproductive system is a common site of a couple disorders, an enlarged prostate or even prostate cancer. And after a certain age, men need to have their prostates checked. So let's talk real quick about prostate exams. Notice on the diagram the location of the prostate. It's really close to the colon, but it's pretty far from everywhere else. And so how does a physician check a prostate to see if it's enlarged or if there's a chance of prostate cancer? Well, they can test through a digital examination, or in other words, inserting the finger up through the anus into the colon and feeling for the anterior side of the prostate. And that way they can tell if the prostate gland is larger than it should be, which is indicative of prostate cancer or an enlarged prostate. Oftentimes, one of the first symptoms of an enlarged prostate or prostate cancer is difficulty urinating. So let's think about why that would be. We'll notice that the prostate surrounds the urethra just below the bladder. If that prostate is enlarged, it's gonna be pushing on the walls of the urethra, making it really difficult for urine to travel through the urethra and out of the body. Just inferior to the prostate is a pair of glands called the Cowper's glands or the bulbo-urethral glands. Bulbo because they're shaped like a bulb and urethral because they're attached to the urethra. Just like the prostate and the seminal vesicle, the bulbal urethral glands will secrete part of the fluid that makes up the semen. From there, the urethra extends through the shaft of the penis and then out to the outside of the body. The penis, of course, is the main delivery system of the sperm. Basically, the sperm travel through the penis and outside of the body during ejaculation. The end or the head of the penis is referred to the glans penis. And here surrounding the glans penis is the foreskin, which sometimes gets removed during circumcision. If we wanna follow the path of sperm traveling from the testes to the outside of the body, it would go like this. The sperm are made in the testes. They'll develop as they travel through those seminiferous tubules, through the epididymis, and then they'll travel up through the vas deferens, then back, and then down. There they'll mix with semen, which is produced by the seminal vesicle, prostate, and bulbar urethral glands. And then from the vas deferens, they'll connect to the urethra where the sperm will travel out through the penis. To follow the path of urine out of the body, urine will of course start in the kidney, travel down through the ureters into the bladder where it's stored. Then during urination, the bladder will contract and then it'll expel the urine down through the urethra to the outside of the body. And just as a reminder, testosterone doesn't travel through any of this. Testosterone goes straight from the testes into the bloodstream where it travels throughout the body. Speaking of which, while I've got this diagram up, let's talk about vasectomies. During a vasectomy, the doctor will make a little incision in through the scrotum and they'll make a cut into the vas deferens, hence vasectomy or cutting of the vas deferens. When the two ends of the vas deferens are cut and tied off, then suddenly sperm are not able to exit the body through that vas deferens. Any sperm that are produced will just break down and be absorbed. Now, somebody deciding to have a vasectomy might have some concerns about this. They could wonder, will ejaculation still happen? And the answer is yes. If you notice, the path of semen traveling from the prostate gland and the seminal vesicle and the bulbar urethral gland is not obstructed by the vasectomy. They could also wonder about testosterone. Would a vasectomy reduce their body's ability to make and release testosterone? The answer to that is no as well. Because remember, the testosterone doesn't travel through the vas deferens at all. It just goes straight to the bloodstream from the testes. Now let's take a look at Terry the torso model's reproductive system and see what these structures look like three-dimensionally in the body. So let's start with the external structures that we can see. Here we have the glans penis as well as the shaft of the penis. We have the scrotum, which is going to surround the testes, and we have the epididymis just above the testes right here. You'll notice here in the scrotum we have these red lines, which are muscles, which will pull the testes up closer to the body or let them go farther away from the body depending on the temperature. So sperm cells will grow in the testes, they'll mature in the epididymis, and they're gonna travel up the vas deferens, which runs up here. You can see the vas deferens better on this side as it travels this way, and then on this side, the vas deferens travels back this way. And the two vas deferens are gonna run in front of the pelvic bone, which we can see right there. So as the sperm travel up through the vas deferens, they're gonna reach back here, the seminal vesicles, where the seminal fluid or semen gets released. And then the vas deferens will converge back here. I can open up the model here and we can see a little bit better. Here's the prostate gland and there's the little tube. That's the vas deferens where it's connecting to the urethra. We have the bladder here. And here on the side, we can see that's gonna be one of the ureters that connects up to the kidney. Back over here, we can follow the urethra 
as it travels down through the prostate gland. Here's gonna be the bulbourethral gland, that tiny little gland right there. And then the urethra travels down through here and then out through the shaft of the penis. Back here, of course, you see the colon, which is really close to the prostate gland. And then there is the anus. I can also show a cross section of the inside of the penis, which looks like this. It's gonna have the urethra, which travels through right there. And that's where urine and semen both travel through. These other two sections right here and right here are blood sinuses. During an erection, the arteries in those areas will expand and blood will rush into the penis during the erection. So to recap all of those structures again, we have the scrotum, the testes, the epididymis, that's gonna to connect to the vas deferens, which runs along here. We have the seminal vesicle. The vas deferens will connect right here to the urethra. That's in the prostate gland. Here's the bladder. We've got the ureter back over on this side. The urethra extends down through here. There's the cowper's or bulbourethral gland. And then the urethra extends the rest of the way down through the penis. All right, that was a lot of different structures. Take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can identify all of the structures of the male reproductive system, as well as what each structure does. First, we have the testes, which are the primary sex organ of the male reproductive system. They'll produce testosterone, as well as produce and develop sperm. The sperm cells travel through the epididymis, where they mature and develop, and both the testes and the epididymis are contained within the scrotum, which is gonna help regulate the temperature of the testes. During ejaculation, sperm will travel through the vas deferens, and those sperm will pass by the seminal vesicle, the prostate gland, and the bulbourethral or Cowper's gland, which all produce some of the fluid that makes up the semen. And here on the diagram, we have the bladder, which is connected to the kidneys via the ureters, and the urethra extends down from the bladder. It'll connect to the vas deferens in the prostate gland, and then run to the outside of the body through the penis. The head of the penis is referred to as the glans penis, and it's surrounded by the foreskin. So those were the structures of the male reproductive system. Thanks for watching. Normally, this is the part of the video where I make jokes to fill the time while asking you to subscribe or watch another video, but it feels weird to make jokes about the reproductive system. So I guess I'll just put this back and uh, see you next time. Whee!